Naming and pulling VFX shots from a timeline and then sending them to a VFX house. What a pain. If you've ever been presented with a timeline and you need to not only pull 50, 60, 100, 200 VFX shots from it and rename each one of those shots and add 10 frame handles to each of those shots, it can be a time consuming task. If only there was a way to automate part of the process. Well, there is, and today we're going to use both Avid and Resolve to make this process a lot easier and faster. We are going to start inside of Media Composer, and we have built a sequence of one, two, three, four, five, six shots. These six shots are now, some of them need to go to the VFX house to get VFX polls done. Some of them do, some of them don't. We want to identify which ones do. We want to name them with the specific VFX naming or nomenclature that this project is going to use. And then we want to send this sequence to Resolve simply because Resolve is a little more elegant in how you can export batch export clips. So we're going to start by identifying what items actually need uh, to have a VFX pull done to them. So for the sake of argument, we are going to say the first shot is perfect. The second shot needs a VFX. So I'm going to add a locator or a marker in Avid to that shot. And I'm going to name or put in the description of this marker my unique VFX naming convention. So for this show, we will say RNDM random VFX number one. This could be anything you're using. This is just what I'm going to use. I'm going to copy that so it's in my uh, clipboard. I'm going to say this one is random number two. We'll say this one is random number three. And this one is random number four. Now you'll notice this shot and this shot are the same shot. Just different portions of the same file. Because that's also a common issue. Uh, what are we up to? Five? I can't remember. One, two, three, number four. Using the same shot in a sequence, um, but needing to name it something different each time it's used is a common issue in a VFX pull workflow. Okay, so we have identified four of our six shots needing to have VFX pulls. So next we are going to go to our uh, list tool, or not our list tool, we're gonna go to our markers. And we are going to export these markers as a text file. And we're just going to redo that text file. And then we would also export a list from Avid to Resolve. I have a preset for that. If you need to know how to get from Avid to Resolve, there is a video in my series of round tripping between Avid and Resolve. So we'll set out this list, we'll go into Resolve, we'll link everything up, and we'll take it from there. Typically, the VFX names are coming from the post supervisor or the VFX supervisor, and they arrive in a spreadsheet, so the naming of those markers can become a copy and paste function, and can probably be done in a text editor after you have created your marker list. After that, we jump to Resolve for the next steps. Okay, we have jumped over to Resolve. We have brought in our six shot timeline. Uh, typically, this would be a timeline that I have colored, so I've thrown some color on it just to keep it as a more 
um, typical workflow. We now want to identify the shots that need VFX pulls. We want to extract those, send them to the VFX house, and we want to do that without any color attached to them. Now you remember in Avid we also exported a locator list or a marker list. We're going to bring that into Resolve and that is going to be uh, a big part of what we're going to do here. So to bring in our markers, now there are online converter tools, but I actually found a script online by a gentleman called Marcus Herrick. And I will link to the, his uh, information where I found this in the description below. He has written a nice little script here where this can all be done right within Resolve. It's, it works very well. Select the Avid marker file. Now, uh, I have seen some scripts where you only want to bring in particular color of markers. Uh, we're going to make our markers blue, but you can make them any color you want here at this point. And bring in the markers. And it's as simple as that. We now have a marker, a timeline marker at the four locations that we had placed them in Avid. And they maintain that naming convention that we created in Avid for our VFX pulls. Those are what our file exports are going to be called when we get to that stage. So the next thing we want to do is go into our delivery tab and we want to set up what our output is going to be. So let's select a directory to save to We'll put it there. And we want to set up what we want to pull. We want to make sure we are doing flat pass. That will turn off the color correction as it exports. Typically in this type of a workflow, you would select individual clips. What that will do is tell Resolve to go through and do every shot as its own individual item rather than uh, however your in out might be set up as a group of clips. Uh, and again, we're going to do DNX 44412 bit. This will be dependent on what you and the VFX house have decided upon. We are going to want to do render at source resolution because we want to go back to the original frame size, depending, you know, irrelevant of what we're editing in. Well, data levels can typically sit at auto. Uh, flat pass on that will strip off the color correction uh, for ours we do not need audio and the file is going to get determined in a second so I'm just going to update this preset and now the next script we're going to bring in is going to do all the magic for us so we have a script here called VFX Pull From Markers. So let's just take a look at that before we uh, press it. So here is the script, and I've put a couple of notes in here, just essentially where I got some of these from. A lot of this has been pulled from a few different areas. Everybody's kind of got their own version of this script floating around. Some only work if your timeline starts at zero, zero. Some only work if you're using blue markers. Some only use it work if you're using green markers. Some didn't do the timeline markers, but the, if they were clip markers. And so I've gone through and kind of sorted through a lot of different scripts and stolen little pieces from one script to the next to build the script that I'm using here that works for my purposes. Um, Again, there's a mention in the script for the Marcus Herrick script to get the timeline locators. I've got a shout out to Roger Magnuson in here because he had a solution for changing it so the timeline did not have to start at one hour. And I have the original location of a couple of the scripts that I used to base this off of are also written here. And I will again post links to this and this in the description down below. 
Uh, credit where credit's due, I did not write the script, but I did mess around with it for a good half day to get it to work to what I wanted. The one thing that is in here is this script is looking for blue markers only. If you want to use a different color marker, you would have to change this to that color, and I believe it has to be capitalized because that tripped me up for a little while. Once you get this to the point that you like it, uh, you would then save this script as a .py file. This is Python. That would then go over to your C drive, program data, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, Scripts, and I have put it in one called Utilities. Once you load that Python script into that location, it will now show up under your workspace scripts. So once we run this script, just keep an eye on our render queue. And very quickly goes through, goes to each marker, marks an in and out, and then names the clip based on the marker number goes to, and adds that to the render queue goes to the next one repeats the process repeats the process so if we call up random VFX number one that is that clip there if we call and it is doing whatever we had set in our preset there were other scripts where the script itself was dictating the file output type I found that a little restrictive this way it does whatever you have preset in your delivery tab. Now the other key with this is our preset for each one of these is also set oh in this case I did not set it to add handles. Typically I want handles so I'm actually going to redo these because I'm going to want anywhere from 5 to 10 handles a lot of the distributors want these shots with handles at the end of the day. This preset. You don't have to save the preset for the script to work. I'm just doing that for my own purposes. And let's run that script one more time. And let's uh, render those clips and we should see the color disappear and hopefully we'll get our 10 frame handles. Okay, so we've made a file check bin and we're just gonna bring those shots back in. And let's bring them into our timeline. And make sure we get our handles. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 frame handles on that shot. Both heads and tails. And looks like we got our 10 frame handles on that shot. Now the one thing we do have to deal with are the 0102, uh, I've yet to figure that one out, but that is the type of thing I would simply use a renamer program. There are tons of these on the internet and wouldn't take too much to figure out a system to get rid of those initial items in this particular program. It would be remove the first N123 items in our list, rename them, and now we can have just the list of the marker names. I'm sure there's a way in the script to have it not do that, but uh, for the amount of saving just doing what we've done here does, not too worried about that aspect of it. Now if you don't need to do VFX pulls, but you just need to pull 20 sections from a master show. This will work for that as well. Just razor up the timeline in Resolve at each in and out point 
and add a marker to the middle of the clip. Timeline marker. Name the marker and carry on. And that's it. Fully automated? No. But if you have ever had to do all that renaming by hand, you will certainly appreciate the speed at which this can now be accomplished. And if you're a Python guru, please take the script and feel free to tweak it. Maybe someone can add a GUI for the second part of the process as well with some further options. As always, please like, subscribe, and yes, leave comments below. I try to reach out to everyone who gets in touch. Thanks for watching.